winter in the Scottish Highlands. The dramatic backdrop for one of the toughest mountain bike races in the world. Drath Puffer is a 24-hour mountain biker race. It's not like riding around the field for 24 hours. It, it, you have to be a decent mountain biker to get around the thing. Done a few 24-hour challenges, including finale, riding top to bottom of Wales. I don't really know what we're going to get, but either way, it's going to be tough. I'm lapping a 13-kilometre route in extreme conditions. Very close to a complete meltdown. It's absolutely finishing me off. Oh my God, my chest is so tight. Against the clock with over 500 competitors. And brutal terrain. Let's do this. The story of Straff Puffer 2023. Well, it's actually been a couple years in the making. We were down to do it a little while ago and then the old Rona hit. But here we are now, 2023, January, and uh, it's all systems go. The time of year, the fact it's in the middle of winter always, the first two weeks in, in January, it's dark for 17 hours. It, it is a mental race. It's all, a bit, it's all in the head. But it's not just racing through the dark for a mere 17 hours. Oh no, it's a 13 kilometer circular route in the highlands of Scotland. The terrain is gnarly to say the least, strewn with rocks, mud, ice and bitter winds causing temperatures to drop way below freezing. However, thanks to Garmin for supplying the Edge 1040 Solar, it's going to allow me to keep track of my stats and the huge battery life means I won't need to charge it once during the duration of this race that both myself and over 500 fearless amateur riders will be taking on. So yeah, the, the last Star Pop ride done was 2020 um, and I, I couldn't believe I managed to take the win in, uh, in solo, which was a, a total dream come true. I couldn't believe it. Uh, it was super stoked and uh, yeah the conditions were very like this year I think uh, quite gritty again and uh, yeah plenty of fun so it was around 20, 25 laps completed and um, around about the 300 kilometers mark uh, distance there's a, I've got a good friend a uh, good friend Robbie Mitchell uh, who I'm really excited to, uh, to see out on course so it's gonna be good fun racing racing against uh, all the guys Straff Puffer, it's a serious challenge, it's not to be underestimated. Um, a, a, a bit of everything in there and a lot more than just a cycle, to be honest. The last time it ran, um, yeah, we were in a good ba battle with Kyle Beattie. It was, it was a real real nip and tuck battle right throughout the night and uh, Kyle, Kyle got me at the end. So uh, now we're back again after Covid. Oh, nice. Pretty Perfect. Right, here we are then at Straff Puffer, weirdly crouching down as we're getting our pit set up. So we've got this really cool gazebo thing set up for the outside, just getting everything pegged down before it gets dark. But it is pretty fresh, but it's not raining, so that is the main thing. So in prep for this one, we've got Amy coming along again as well. She's gonna be like my support crew. I would describe Richard as a human yeah, trapped in a spaniel's it. body. Ah, get off! Do you want me to elaborate more? Riches will go off like a, a rabbit. Maybe went a bit hard to start with because I'm feeling it a little. And just he needs to know to slow it down and pace himself because he's got, um, you know, such a desire to win and really do well. He needs to remember that this is a 24 hour race. So he needs to go the, the full distance and kind of rein it back in when he needs to and listen to us when we tell him to eat and drink. Eight thirty on the dot. Racing starts at ten, so we got a bit of time. There's a riders briefing at quarter to ten, just to go through everything, and that's when it kicks off.
Right then, everybody, for such an epic task requires an epic bit of kit. So for this, thank you to Garmin, I'm using the Edge 1040 Solar. Now, you might be thinking, solar rich as 17 hours of darkness at this event, and you're absolutely correct, but it's not just its solar capabilities that make this thing amazing. It has actually got a monstrous battery life as well. So even in weather conditions like this, where it's going to drop to below zero degrees, the battery in this thing will be more than enough to last the entire 24-hour duration of the event. Yikes. This race had a start like no other, a Le Mans style start where we'd have to run to our bike. Luckily, the ace up my sleeve was once again bringing Amy along for support, who was armed and ready with my trusty steed. Oh my God! Because it is just right in the, the kind of middle of January, you get you can get all the elements you've got. Uh, you can have snow, you can have kind of sleet, ice. I think it's the thing as well is you've got the kind of punchy climbs, and it could be uh, that little bit soggier, which can is kind of zap your energy a bit quicker. All right, we are 50k, three hours 34. Maybe work a bit hard to start with because I'm feeling a little. The course is pretty relentless. Just goes up or down. There's nothing really flat anywhere. There's a lot of climbing. We've already climbed 1,500 meters, so that's three and a half hours. It's going to be tough the whole way. Oh, man, my legs are on fire. Oh, Rich. You all right? Good to see you. Just plodding along, doing my thing. <laughs> hey! Oh, not oh, bad. All OK? Yeah, good. We are in well into the race and well into lap traffic coming up now so it's cool there's so many different types of people and so many different types of bike garmin screaming at me to take food and water but i can barely hold on okay Legs are definitely feeling it. Garmin's telling me, well, look, we got 91% battery, so the thing's a monster, more so than I, I am. Just keep spinning, just keep spinning, 20 hours to go, just keep spinning. coming. We'd escaped it for this long. Oh, it's raining properly now. Yo, all right, so it's time to get lit. So for this, we, exposure have kindly helped us out where we're running six pack Mark 12, Diablo Mark 13. Bars, heads, that made sense. Woo, this is tough. With up to 5,250 lumens from the six pack and 2,000 lumens from the Diablo, despite the darkness, my route was well and truly lit up. Battery check, 86%. Literally far outlasting my own body by a long way. Right peeps, thanks for all your help. See you in a bit, lovely life, bye. The 
there's going to be low points. Um, it doesn't matter, supposing you go out for a 50 mile training ride, 100, 200, you go through low points. So they're going to come. Who knows if it's three hours in tomorrow or it's 12 or 18 hours. It's just reminding yourself that it's a low point and it will pass and there'll be a good point behind it. So yes, surround yourself with the right people um, and try and anticipate uh, what's coming and just be ready for it. Yeah, Rich isn't doing too badly now. He came in on the previous lap, very close to a complete meltdown, unfortunately. I think that there was just um, uh, a bout of freezing rain that had just completely got to him. So the man who never wears gloves and rides in all weathers, actually, that was very close to him having a complete meltdown. He thought he was going to be sick. He was nearly in tears. And, um, yeah, not in a good way at all. But um, he's come in, has something to eat, and um, actually when he left, he was in fifth place and I think about 15 seconds off of fourth place. So that spurred him on to go out, I think. Oh, it's pretty dry out to be honest. Yeah. There's the odd puddle like just here and there. Please don't eat a lot, mate. Yeah. 20 to seven. And it feels about one in the morning. We're not even halfway. Right, I need to get going and get some heat back in me. Everything is cold because everything's damp and wet. Can't even feel the button of my dropper half the time. Yes! Right, doodles! Pretty wild conditions, I'll be honest. Probably some of the toughest ones I've had to ride slash race in. But, uh, that's what makes the puffer the puffer, isn't it, I guess? As I dived deeper into the race, things were getting increasingly difficult. Looking at my Garmin, I could see that my performance metrics were telling me some pretty depressing numbers, with both my stamina and stamina potential hitting an all-time low. But was still useful to know so that I didn't push on and bury myself even deeper. The hardest part of the race is without doubt the graveyard shift when it's three or four in the morning and it's windy and cold and worse and nasty outside and you've got to get out your warm sleeping bag perhaps and get on your bag and go. Uh, that, that's when it gets a mental race. So it's midnight, we're 145k in. Um, it's getting, this is like the tough point I think. It gets even tougher. From now on it just basically gets really hard. So it's hard. Now it's really hard because you start, like you're physically tired, so that's a given. But now mentally, it's a challenge because we've well, just been going for ages. And I think to do this normally, just for 24 hours, it wouldn't be easy, it'd be really hard. But you add the word racing and a timer, and you go that bit faster all the time. And that's what kills you, because you just try a bit harder than you, you should really. We'll see, we're chucking 10 hours to go. Just a little bit of food because I, I'm feel my tummy's a bit funny. You should want anything. Just a, a tiny bit and some sugar. Ten to three in the morning. 170 kilometres in now. 39% left of battery. <sighs> it's getting tougher. Each lap gets tougher. I was doing two at a time and having a quick break, but I'm almost having to have a quick break after every lap. So my body's just not used to just taking this kind of pasting, basically. My wrists and my shoulders and my neck. Probably say that after every flipping challenge, but they're they're so tight, so tight and so tall. We're good. We're sitting in the sixth still. Should we crack on? Louis says yes. Crack on, darling. Poppet says crack on. She looks freezing cold. <laughs> uh, all right. See you later.
What's up, sports fans? It's 10 past six in the morning. That means we've got under four hours to go. Oh my God, my chest is so tight. 24 hour racing is no joke. It's way gnarlier than just riding for 24 hours at like your own pace and just chilling, doing whatever, because you just push on. It's actually finished. It's absolutely finishing me off. Very happy to be on my last lap. I'm cooked. Just little things start creeping in, so like my right knees and just like niggling away now. But it's cool. It's an experience, isn't it? Heck of a race draft, Papa. So there we have it then, the Strath Puffer has been done and definitely not dusted. Heck of an event, and I don't really know where to begin when it comes to summarizing something like this. It was just, it's really tough. It's definitely the 20, toughest 24 hour challenge I've done. And I think it's because it was a race as well. So I pushed that little bit harder with much higher heart rates at the beginning. The conditions were obviously pretty horrendous. You either get really, really cold and frozen or you get really cold and wet. And we got the latter, obviously, with plenty of rain, lots and lots of mud, and still an average of zero degrees throughout the entire event with a low of minus two. Did I enjoy it? I kind of did, yeah, I'll be honest. I, there were some low, low times where I needed to be picked up by Amy, which I found really difficult. But on the whole, when I look back after these things, I think just I'm really proud of myself how I did. I'm really proud of the team. Would I do it again? watch this space because I can't guarantee anything there but for all you kind of stats hungry people out there I thought I'd hit you with a few numbers so in total I did 18 laps over just a smidge over 23 hours 214 K was done with over five and a half thousand meters of climbing I think it was actually a little bit more but I need to double check 10,000 calories or 10,012 if you want to be really precise calories burnt I was a good couple stone lighter I reckon at the end of this one um, but hey, we completed it, we did it. I came over seventh place, which I am stoked for. Unbelievably happy. So there we go, another massive one in the book. So firstly, thank you to Garmin for making this one happen. Exposure as well for providing some amazing lights. The camera crew, as always, Unsung Heroes, they did a solid job as well. And most of all, Amy for basically looking after me the whole time, because I definitely wouldn't have finished this event without her, she was unbelievable in keeping me going. But look, what do you reckon? Should I do any more 24 hour challenges, any other races, anything else you'd like to see me do? I'm game for most things, but not if you're gonna try and kill me. But we'll see. Look, thank you very much for watching everybody. I'm gonna get out of here. It's been a pleasure and I'll see you next time.